Robin Hood Radio presents Flavor Matters with Serge Madikians. He's the owner of Saravan Restaurant in Amenia. If you can't find him in the kitchen or gardens, then follow him either on Facebook or Twitter at Saravan NY. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. This is Serge from Flavor Matters and Saravan Restaurant. I'm continuing my conversation with Dr. Vartanush Petrosyan, who is a medical doctor who was a gastro inter, gastroenterologist. I speak English fluently, but I have a very hard time with that word, uh, who uh, also had a TV show in Armenia and opened uh, one of the first uh, health food restaurants in Armenia. Uh, Vartanush, thank you for staying here with us. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be here. Vartanush, um, we finished the last segment by my um, sort of summarizing your career, your interests, and your actions in Armenia. And uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you are a kind of a social activist. Would you agree to that or no? Uh, yes, I am activist, and I could say I am changer and improver. I would, I, I would like to say I always uh, have no rules when I have to improve or change something, and make the life of people better, happier, healthier. So I'm not afraid to be the first one <laughs> to do that and to show direction to reach them. And yes, when I uh, became a dietitian maybe 20 years ago in Yerevan, it was too wild. And everyone told me, are you crazy? Uh, who will go to dietitian? What's the stupid uh, profession? Are you sure that you will make Armenians uh, to eat something healthy? It's unsidious and uneasy. Why do you spend so much money for your certification and license? Go to uh, to choose the other specification. So, but I am so happy to be dietitian and <laughs> be the, maybe the first. But uh, it's really uh, what I want to do. Have to do. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you say that because when uh, you received your certification twenty years ago. Armenia was not facing the difficulties that it's facing now. Armenian children were not suffering from obesity at the rate that they do now because the traditional home-cooked meals that they were that you grew up with and uh, other Armenians have grown up, especially in the rural areas, because that is still uh, the way in rural areas Armenians eat. Um, the urban center... Uh, they didn't see a need for that, whereas you saw that in your own practice, correct? Am I correct? Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. So in um, treating this, in seeing your patients, in working with the UN, in uh, opening up a restaurant, you are also a co-founder of APCE, which I would like you to tell us about that. Uh, the whole grain bread production, and you are responsible for menu and content development and quality assurance for that program. Tell us a little bit about that program. Yeah, this is APC. It's an upset. It's been in Armenia plate. So it's uh, something similar with plate. And it's, it's something yeah. similar with what? Your connection is a little bit off. Oh, sorry, it's... Uh, okay, no worries. So, uh, how do you hear me now? I hear you perfectly now. Oh, thank you very much. So it uh, association associated with healthy plate. So Upse is plate. We would like, we um, name this company Upse, just which is in your plate. We prepare with love. Love in Armenia is Sej. Um, yes. You have said Yerevan, yes. Yerevan. Yes. And uh-huh. it's uh, mi burs, mi upset. Mi upset, it means a uh, bit of love in your plate. And uh, it was the... What a wonderful main, name. 
Yeah, <laughs> we tried a lot. We thought a lot, and then we decided to yeah call it abse and associate with plate and with love because what we do, we do. Uh, the main value for us is uh, love and care for our customers. Uh, what about whole grain? Unfortunately, this Western touch move from our tables. Uh, every whole grain things and sourdough breads. Maybe you know, maybe no, but uh, Armenians lots eat a lot of Armenian eat a lot of bread. In of course, their, I know. Yep. Yeah, in their daily life, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we have no healthy bread now available. Every traditions uh, receipts are lost, and we have only this prosciutto flour bread on our shops and on our tables. Uh, and the I, on- I, I would like to clarify something here. When you say that uh, that that the Armenians don't have that available, you are really speaking about the urban centers. Not only, but also rural. It was a shock for me to find out that there is no whole grain meal in whole Armenia. So all our meals are only for getting this uh, wheat, we in Armenia say, a first, uh, first sort of flour. So that's why we have no whole grain flour available. That's why we have no uh, whole grain bread available. That's interesting. I was unaware of that. I mean, I I went to a few villages and, uh, you know, the, the, the mother of the household uh, definitely milled the grain and uh, made the flour and um, made her lavash. But you're raising an interesting point, which I want to pose you a question here. Forgive me for brev. We're short on time. I want to get a lot out of this conversation. Um, So in relation to the whole grain, I have a question for you because we spoke about Armenian potatoes and Armenian tomatoes. How over the last couple decades, uh, more Western seeds and uh, more uh, corporate companies had provided cheaper and less expensive uh, production of tomatoes and potatoes. And Armenia uh, and Armenians were very proud of their potatoes and very proud of their tomatoes. And uh, you told me the trend has reversed. So tell us really quickly about how the westernization of uh, or the or the change in the production of tomatoes and potatoes in armenia went back reverted back to the traditional armenian seeds and armenian way of growing potatoes let me very briefly share my experience with this, not only uh, as a medical doctor, but as a usual customer uh, of favorite Armenian tomatoes. Yeah. Yes, Western uh, seed producers met with the barrier of Armenian demand of customers. So uh, this year and um, last year we had our old-fashioned, so-called old-fashioned traditional Armenian sorts of tomatoes. So we could say that Armenian traditions uh, win uh, Western seed producers, if shortly this is the real situation. So So you you can now have, uh, it's very easy now you will find in Armenia local sorts of tomatoes, for example, now. That is wonderful to hear. So I'm wondering, what have you learned from that uh, experience, from that transition, from that conversion, as, as, as we would say, and how can you apply that to the whole wheat project that you're working on? Um, you know, from this case, I think we have two lessons learned. The first is the uh, we have core traditional values of Armenian nation <laughs> that they, uh, they yes, they appreciate what they have and they w- value. Maybe I, I saw 
bother the minute, but I think it's uh, it's about uh, traditions and core core national values. And the second is uh, not only about um, uh, tomatoes, but also now we are very open for new kind of products. Now we are open, for example, for rucola or for broccoli and uh, we have local broccoli, very high quality and uh, very cheap and available now, for example. It's not Armenian tradition, but uh, our farmers works <laughs> uh, hard to be trendy. So from one hand, we keep our traditions and our sorts of tomatoes. On the other hand, we uh, bring in our market new products. Right. So the farmers are diversifying and they're trying to meet the demand. I suspect because of social media and the globalization. I mean, here you are in Yerevan and here I am in Armenia, New York, and we are having a conversation. And uh, you and I had FaceTime yesterday, which I think is amazing. You know, 20 years ago, that didn't that didn't exist. Um but how do you think, how do you take this trends, these new developments in Armenia and uh, the, the disposition of the farmers to meet the demands of the consumers? Uh, how, how do you think that can help you in your effort to... Um, bring a healthier approach to the to the process of making bread in Armenia? A very interesting question. Um, from one side, we are trying to increase demand for healthy food, especially for whole grain. And even uh, I... I remember some days ago that maybe this Armenian translation of whole grain, which is Ambok Chahadik, maybe uh, by the, uh, the, uh, is, was done by me because I looked for dictionaries maybe 10 years ago, maybe before to find Armenian word for this whole grain. I didn't find that I decided that I would translate myself. <laughs> and I used this Ambok Chahadik for this. For, and now is Amokchatik is very popular here, the word whole grain. Good for uh, you. Every, Good for now, you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes, yes, I, it's my activist role and changer, improve a role maybe in this, uh, in this country, in this life. So for uh, one side, uh, we are trying to increase uh, demand of healthy bread, whole grain bread, just sharing our experience and knowledge, what is whole grain, what is benef- what are benefits of whole grain, what is the different, how to choose, how to keep, where uh, to find it from. And the other, uh, from the other side, we are trying I mean, to... I, I'm sorry, I want to interject because I, I want to congratulate you uh, I, I, as as you were speaking, you know, I would all these images of my travels through Armenia and my childhood in Iran, and I thought, you know, you, you, she's right. You know, we I never ate whole wheat bread. Uh, we always ate white flour bread, and bread was always present at the table. And here you are, you're changing the flavor um, spectrum of the Armenian people, because that is something very new. Am I correct? Yes, you are absolutely correct. And we're talking about a nation that, you know, is is very much into do-it-yourself, you know. A lot of uh, Armenian kitchens, you make your own uh, butter, you make your own sour cream, you make your own cheese, you make your own fermented yogurt and fermented butter so introducing something new like a whole wheat bread um, to a nation that is really unfamiliar with it is not an easy task yes it's a nation such, such as us armenians who are very opinionated 
and very, very set in our opinions. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's why it's not the easy way. <laughs> you no, know, it is not. So I, I think you've done a great, great job, and I want to congratulate you on that. We are on the way to do that. We haven't finished it because uh, we are trying to create this full value chain of whole grain. So starting from the farmer, uh, from the selected sorts of wheat till the uh, table when the whole family eating whole grain. So we are not finishing our job on this, but we are on the way, on our way. And I am so happy because 10 years ago, no one knows what is whole grain. Yeah. And now they not only know, but also yeah. would like to find out and to try it. They're, they're craving it. Bartanush John, I feel like I could speak with you for another three, four hours. <laughs> I cannot wait to meet you in person when I come to Yerevan next, which I hope will be at the end of this year. And I look forward to going out and eating with you and uh, studying and learning about all the projects. And I don't know if you know in English the word outreach. You are doing a lot of outreach to the Armenian people and Armenian population. And I have a lot of respect for that. So I want to express both my gratitude and your and my appreciation for your hard and determined work. Thank you very much. I'm really enjoying every moment of my work. <laughs> Maybe that's why, yeah. And that's probably why, why you have not given up and you keep pushing forward because you're enjoying the work. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vartanush Uh This is Serge from Saravan Restaurant and Flavor Matters. I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Vartanush Petrosyan, a medical doctor who educated me about whole wheat production in Armenia and on her effort in uh, changing or countering the Western influences uh, in Armenia and maintaining the more traditional way in which Armenians eat. I really appreciate your taking the time with me, Vartan Thank you, Flavor Matters is a joint production of the Saravan Restaurant and Robin Hood Radio. For more information on the Saravan Restaurant in immediate New York, saravan.com on the web.